Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Alan Banks. I work for Rode Dental Laboratory, and today we are going to amaze you. We're joined by doctors all over the country and really all over the world as we announce a service that is called Grammetry. I'd like you to think about something maybe a little bit, a little bit uh, unique. Imagine you wake up this morning, you go down to your car, it's the same car you've had, but today your car can fly. That is what Grammetry offers you. We call it barrier breaking, record taking. And we're gonna go through this whole process today. And we're gonna show you how it works, how you integrate it into your current practice with your current technology or technology that you wanna be, uh, that you wanna be involved with and purchase. You have options with us. For the past year, we have worked with photogrammetry. We have made about a thousand cases. And this is, uh, Either, either in restorative protocols or in live surgery. About 800 of these cases are same day turnaround of, uh, of, of photogrammetry records and us designing a prosthesis, emailing the doctor an STL file and they print it in their office or some we printed here at the laboratory and shipped it over, uh, shipped quickly. Photogrammetry is very impressive. It's a, it's a high level uh, degree of accuracy, micron level. They've proven it, it's documented, we've seen it. It's very impressive. Uh, but really, photogrammetry does have what we call a problem statement. Uh, photogrammetry has a, a little bit of limited utility. You, know, you buy one of these scanners for, and you'll see the last line there, thirty to $50,000 for a scanner. And what does that scanner provide? That scanner provides very limited use. It gives you a multi-unit abutment or an implant in space. It doesn't give you the patient the smile, the teeth, the soft tissue, the heart tissue, the bite registration, the video, it doesn't give you any of this other information. What do you do for that? You use your iOS scanner. That's where we're gonna come in. Photogrammetry, again, although it's wonderful, the equipment is clunky, it's expensive, it's all on back order, you can't have one. Uh, and, um, and really, again, ut utility is, uh, is, is limited. And if you're in a practice with multiple offices or multiple chairs doing live surgery, the last thing you wanna do is keep multiplying $40,000. There is no point in doing it, and we're gonna prove that today. We're gonna to talk about grammetry. Grammetry is using your iOS equipment to capture all the records needed on the day of surgery to order a prosthesis. We've done it many times. It's been available for about a year in, in testing and in private practice, and now we are bringing it out to, you know, to the public. And we have been very impressed with this technology. And, uh, and we'll show you a little bit of a comparison and we'll tell you the entire workflows. The nice thing about grammetry is that uh, it's very inexpensive. It's 1%, it's probably 0.7 the cost of your average photogrammetry uh, product. Uh, you just don't need the equipment, you already have it. Uh, it is also um, available. You can order it on our website today and you can have it tomorrow. And you can start doing a case tomorrow afternoon if you wish. The benefits are, we think they far outweigh photogrammetry, uh, just from the simple, the simple fact that uh, you don't have to have the equipment, but you can make a model if you want to, and you can have a physical record to extract, to take out of the mouth, to do some extra oral scanning. Uh, it is appropriate for day of surgery or, or restorative protocols. You can use it for robotics. You can use it for um, a, a guided surgery, freehand surgery, uh, the Yomi system, really just about any type of modality that you use for full arch surgeries, you can integrate uh, grammetry into this uh, and, uh, and you can achieve the same type of accuracy that you would from photogrammetry. Arguably, you can get a better result with a couple of methods that we're gonna show you. Let's compare some accuracy. The case that you see in front of you was completed by Dr. Isaac Towell. The tooth part is from grammetry. This was an intraoral scan of the grammetry opti splints all looted together with a medit scanner. The green or the blue ish is from his iCam. And we brought both into the software. We did it for comparison reasons. And we wanted to show the compelling, uh, the compelling uh, accuracy of, of grammetry. So I'm, I'm gonna kind of go slow here, all right? So you can, you can see it with your eyes here that, that the two mesh blend almost perfectly together. And this is from an intraoral scan. And today we're gonna talk about 
extraoral and intraoral. So if you can get this kind of precision in somebody's mouth while they're breathing on the camera, while there's blood flowing during live surgery, then think of the accuracy you can get with scanning the opti splint outside the mouth. Pretty remarkable. The grammetry system and solution circles around the opti splint. The opti splint is a scan body. It's extremely accurate. We've been working with scan bodies for two decades. The only way to make an implant restoration is with a scan body. There is no other method to make a custom abutment or a model or anything. And we have made, uh, as, a, as an industry, millions and millions of cases with iOS and scan bodies. We know it works. There is no mystery here as far as that goes. Uh, and we've talked about it before already <laughs> this early. It's, it's affordable, it's applicable, and it's available. And uh, with that, with that, let's, uh, let, let's continue. The, the OptiSplint comes in a kit. Uh, it is set up for six implants, for a six implant surgery with screws. There's special screws. That's important to know. We'll talk a little bit about that later. And it comes with these two frames. These frames are for looting in the mouth. Uh, you're basically making an, uh, an IVJ with a scan body. That's at its, at its basic core, that's what it is. And then the blue plugs, those are scannable analogs. Those are for a restorative process uh, when the time comes. And the little blue ones in the middle are just handles to set the frames in uh, for, um, uh, when you're looting. That's the kit. Now, grammetry is more than just a device and a scan body, though. The, the service around it that Road Dental Laboratory offers is the kit, the product, the actual physical product, but also the design service. So if you're at uh, you know, level three, four, or five, you're going to want design files. And that is what we email you on the day of surgery or we email you as, as a restorative protocol to do try-ins and prototypes um, and, and other, other options. Uh, we also have a printer verification uh, uh, component that we'll show you. We work with a vendor and we'll soon be selling uh, scanners, uh, lab scanners and you know, you kind of have to decide if you want to go to that level or not. And then a final file. So if you're milling in house, uh, then you'll want to have a final file. Our connection with doctors around the country, around the world is a digital connection these days. Yes, we still work with what we call level one, but there are five levels to the evolution of the dental practice of the dental industry and doctors and their practices fit in what we call the five different levels. We work a lot with level one, but they are not digital. They are, they are analog acquisition. Level two, this is an entry point into grammetry. This is where the doctor has an iOS scanner. They are simply capturing the records, uploading them. We're designing and fabricating the prosthesis and shipping it out to the doctor pretty quickly. Level three is the next step where a lot of photogrammetry doctors are and a lot of doctors want to get to right now immediately and it's all available to you through grammetry. That is when you can acquire, which is iOS, and you can also fabricate, which is print. If you have a printer, and we, we talked about that a little bit, which printers, if you have the printer, you're a level three. If you want to take it to the next level, <laughs> which is four, then you would purchase a lab scanner. Lab scanners are relatively inexpensive, especially compared to photogrammetry, uh, but you also have a high utility. There are many things that you can digitize with a lab scanner. The grammetry uh, assembly, which is, uh, if you buy a scanner from us, you're going to be at three to four microns. Uh, you can, we, we sell one that's a little bit Further up, five, six, seven microns, but you can be as close as three to four microns on your grammetry and all the other things you want to put in the scanner, a denture, a model, you want to make a splint, uh, you want to put a scan body in with an impression for, for flipping it. I mean, all these things, there's just a pile of things that you can put into a lab scanner. It's what we do every day. Uh, and then there's level five, which we also support. There are some practices, uh, lots of them out there now, they're, they're, they're gathering uh, that have the ability to fabricate final restorations. And in those cases, sometimes the design part is the only hang up. Uh, we have a team of expert full arch designers. We design everything but full arch. And we can send you the file and you can mill uh, in, your, in your zirconia mills or however you, however you do your thing for your final restoration, uh, we can provide the files for you. That's level five. And this is the 
the uh, long-term integration of the dental office and the progressive contemporary dental laboratory like Roe. Within the system, we have certified four scanners. Now, we can certify more, uh, but they have to have a very high degree of accuracy and they have to be able to scan full arch. And we have found that there can be challenges with that with some of the other scanners. Uh, Prime scan is, uh, is I, I don't know, There's, it's argued out there. Is that the best one? It's incredible. It really is, especially the way you can layer uh, scans. Uh, the Trios is wonderful. Everybody knows about the Trios. The Medit allows you to stack multiple scans when needed. Study models, tissue scans, uh, healing collar scans, OptiSplint scans. It'll stack it all up and it's very intuitive. And Dr. Dr. Tal is going to show us a lot about that in the coming weeks. We have a nice partnership with Strauman. We've done a lot of test scanning with their uh, scanner and it is uh, extremely accurate. We used it to compare against lab scanners. If you are in level two, then let's go through real quick that, that, um, that level. That means that you are just acquiring scans. Okay, you, have an inter you have an iOS scan, you're scanning the patient, scanning the OptiSplint, uh, taking photographs, uploading them, and then we are fabricating your prosthesis. And we have a, a, a team here, it's all they do, all day. Design, print, clean, cure, beautify, ship and they are, uh, they are in, in the opinion of our customers, the best. So that's level two. If you're level three, then you have the printer. Uh, we're gonna do all the design steps. We're gonna get the case all ready to go. We're gonna email you an STL file. You will nest that STL file in your printer and, uh, and, and off you go to uh, printing, cleaning, curing, beautifying there in-house. That has been our Modality for about 95% of our cases during the past uh, during the past year. We recommend. Uh, I mean, you're going to require to have a printer that can print uh, a final material. The Onyx, uh, the Onyx Tough that's out now, the Flexera, Lucitone. There are multiple materials out there. You want to have something that is really uh, quote unquote validated for full arch. You don't want to get in trouble uh, and not have a really ideal uh, printer and resin for delivering these prosthetics. Level three also, uh, well, I mean, since it includes printing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that, you're, that your printer is accurate, okay? We have been in these situations where uh, the, the, the prosthesis comes out and it doesn't fit. And it is not from the records and it's not from the design, it's from the printer. And you can be off a millimeter if you just open the box, and started uh, without validating. So the validation process is uh, we will we we sell this a simple device. It's a stone cast uh, with analogs that have been scanned with a three micron three shape scanner. We know that our file is accurate. It will fit if it's printed properly. You're going and we're going to send you the design file. This is for a desk screw. We can make it for different screws, the, res, uh, the Rosen and even, um, even a few others. We just, we don't list them, but we can make it for um, several different screw companies. And you will print and you will make sure that this fits on your model, on every single site. You're sitting passively, put a screw through it, do a, uh, do a one screw test, whatever you can to make sure that it's correct. All right, that, that will help. And you, you will know when you're ready to go to surgery because that is passive. Level four. Level four means you have purchased a laboratory scanner. In, in, in our opinion, you sh sh should be somewhere between six and $15,000 in a scanner. Uh, the 310 is a very affordable scanner and, uh, and so are all of the Shining 3D scanners. The 510 gets a little bit more expensive, 710 a little more, uh, but this is about micron level. Sorry, a little, little bit reversed there. The, you know, the 510 is, um, I think, about a five to seven micron level, and it is extremely accurate. We have this one here. We've been testing it. It's, uh, it's, it's really the level you want if you're going to scan your Opti splint and upload for a final restoration. Not day of surgery. That's optional. But for a final restoration, at this point, you'll want a lab scanner or you're just going to ship us the Opti splint. We'll get into that. We'll, we'll talk about the whole workflow. If you are milling final zirconia in-house, you probably already have a lab scanner. Sure, uh, that is where the OptiSplint comes out. Uh, we can design the prosthesis for you. If you don't have designing capability, or perhaps not that, not that particular day you don't, you upload the files to us, we send you the design file you, uh, you mill. Perfectly fine if you're a level five. 
Let's get into the modalities. The modalities are the different ways to integrate grammatry into the full arch surgical workflow. And we're gonna talk about a few. The first one, which is screws and tads, that's the same type of process that, uh, that you would use for photogrammetry. The same type, sort of. And I think you're gonna like the twist. The other would be a combi guide, where we go through the whole process of guided surgery planning for full arch, where we are putting teeth in the right place, we're designing and planning implants where they should be according to future tooth position, we're measuring vertical space, we're going through the whole process to make sure that the patient is set up for long-term success with prosthetic thickness, implant placement, implant rotation, all the things you really wanna have for an effective uh, uh, implant surgery. And then there's uh, the tooth, uh, tooth uh, support, well, not tooth support, tooth is the reference. The teeth stay in the mouth, uh, some teeth, and that is the vertical reference to before and after. Uh, and then uh, dentures, which is a very common way to do it, either using an immediate denture or patient's existing denture. And then the last one is a dynamic, uh, dynamic surgery. We're not gonna talk about that, but I wanted to put it in the list here because if you are involved in uh, robotics uh, or GPS or any type of navigation, uh, this can be plugged right into it. So the first, uh, the first one we're gonna discuss is the screws, tads, uh, the arch tracers, which is part of the grammetry uh, process if you choose to go that route. Uh, and then we'll continue with the others. Screws or OptiSplint uh, arch tracers, as we call them. This modality is very, uh, very familiar in the marketplace if you've been uh, involved in photogrammetry, if you've, um, if you've used a digital protocol uh, to make restorations. So in this protocol, you will place screws somewhere in the mouth or the uh, grammetry uh, arch tracers. You can see these here. We'll have another image of it coming up in a minute. But the key here is that this is the beginning of surgery. You know, in this case, it's flapped over here on the right. The arch tracers, you have to flap first to set these. Screws, you just place them here in the retromolar pads or you place them back in the palate or just beyond where the suturing is going to be, where the, uh, the, the flap is going to be, or down in the palate. And those screws remain in the surgery during, uh, in the mouth during the entire surgery. That is key to saving the bite, all right? This is, this is uh, prior to um, digital impressions being captured uh, with the bite. Now these screws can be purchased from a couple different companies. Uh, Salvin sells a nice screw with a big head. Osteogenics, both these companies sell really good kits uh, with all kinds of lengths. If you're going to purchase our grammetry arch tracers, then you're going to want to purchase a 10 to 12 millimeter long screw. Those are available through either one of these companies. The head needs to be uh, wider than two millimeters. Uh, we will be inventorying a screw soon that we can include along with the arch tracer, but for now, 10 to 12 millimeters. On the uh, day of surgery, at a minimum, if we're printing, at a minimum, you'll need a kit. You'll need the OptiSplint kit. You'll need, uh, um, what we are recommending is a stellar material and you wanna purchase the white, not the pink. You wanna purchase the white because scanners pick up white better than pink. You'll need a, I mean, You'll need some other things, but for the, <laughs> for the OptiSplint portion of it, uh, um, some um, forceps, a curing light, and really what you see here on the screen is what you need. And then of course, if you're gonna print, you need a printer, but this is just to do the intraoral capture. Those are the simple tools. Now this is where we turn what uh, everybody in the marketplace has learned on its head. This is where, uh, th this is where the car can fly. In a surgery, what you're going to do for a surgical case is you're going to place the three screws. You decide, you know, upper, lower, palate, uh, distal. You'll, you'll place the screws and you're gonna scan the upper, lower, and the bite. Okay, the bite in uh, centric is what normal, normally comes over. We can open the bite in software a little bit, a couple millimeters, a few millimeters, if you wanna do a leaf gauge or a centric relation bite and you can capture that, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll open the bite. All right, so screws are in, patient is scanned. Now, you go through the entire surgery, okay, all the way until you have the, the multi and abutments in the mouth and you perform the OptiSplint looting in the mouth. We'll discuss that. But what I, wanna, what, what I really want to um, convey here 
is that these are the three symbol records. You're gonna scan the full arch, you're gonna capture the healing colors in sutured tissue with the screws, and those are the two intraoral scans, and your patient is done. The extraoral scan will be of the OptiSplint on a bench under, under a controlled environment with your iOS scanner. You don't have patient breath, you don't have blood moving, you don't have sutures, you don't have anything, you don't have anything going on behind it or under it that's gonna throw off the scanner. You're gonna have a pure scan on the bench top. That is where the precision comes in that nobody else offers. You cannot do this with photogrammetry. You cannot do this with looting a bunch of scan bodies together, right? A bunch of healing collars together. It's just not feasible. So this comes out of the mouth and you scan it and this is what you upload. Let's go through a case. Patient is ready for surgery. Full face, full smile picture. Now maybe they're a little nervous on the day of surgery, so maybe you took this picture, you know, uh, last week. Full face, full smile. We want the soft tissue, we want the lips, we want the eyes, we want the whole, we want the patient experience, we want the patient anatomy. So get us a nice photograph. We were gonna design this case behind the lips. Then put the, put the screws in, put the screws in and scan. Now I'm gonna give you a little different option here that is being taught in a lot of these, uh, these courses. The week before, two weeks before the patient comes in, scan the upper, scan the lower, we will design you a, uh, a smile. We can give you some idea of bone reduction levels if you'd like. Uh, we can give you tooth position. We can really help set the case up for success because you know, this patient came for aesthetics and this patient only has five teeth left. So let's do a setup. Let's make things ideal. Then on the day of surgery, when the patient comes in, scan. Okay, and you're gonna scan with the screws, upper, lower, bite, it's go time. Go through the surgery. Teeth come out, bone is adjusted, implants go in, multi-unit abutments go in, and then at that point, you are going to complete the OptiSplint intraoral uh, process. You're gonna put an OptiSplint on each of the multi-unit abutments, you're gonna insert the honeycomb frame, you're gonna loot them all together, you're gonna to remove it, and you're gonna put it on the bench top. That is the simple process of, of capturing the implant position. We have the implant positions. We do not need to relate this back to the bite uh, or, or the tissue or anything in an intraoral scan. The next step will be to scan the patient and pick up the, uh, the healing collars and the screws, just like the image there on the left. Okay, scan away. When you scan, you're gonna make sure you always pick up the screws or we lose the bite. Okay, the screws will, 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 will bring us back to the original scan. If your scanner is struggling, if you're struggling that particular day with capturing this, be prepared with a, uh, a stock tray and a lot of impression material and pick it up. See back here, there's two screws, four screws. This is, um, this is Dr. Charles, Dr. Jermaine Charles, a friend of ours who who completes these cases, he has four screws back here and he does four because in his long experience of doing these cases, he found that tripoding was better with two instead of, with four instead of two. You will take this out of the mouth and you will take an iOS scan of the impression. And now we have the implant positions, we have the screws, we can bring this back into the, uh, the original scan of the patient, and then we can bring in the OptiSplint. So this is a matter of stacking files, and we are very good at it, and we, are, we have a, a very precise method for stacking these files together. But think of the simplicity you have here, right? You do a simple uh, um, uh, IVJ, simple IVJ, take it out of the mouth, quick. Put the healing collars in and suture around. The patient is almost done at this point. Take a PVS or take an IOS, patient's done. That's it. Patient goes home or patient goes and relaxes while we get the case ready. The healing collars in, in, in our system, uh, there, there, are, there are many available. Uh, and there will, we'll add more as we move along. Uh, but as long as you have one of these, then you'll let us know which one they are in the RX. Uh, then we are integrated with, uh, with OptiSplint. Tell us which one and you're good to go. If 
you don't have the healing collars. For some reason, you don't have healing collars on the day of surgery. There's some, some, other, some other reason that you want to scan the OptiSplint in the mouth. That's fine. That's how the, the product has been used for, uh, you know, for the past year in the mouth. Let me just go, quickly go through this. OptiSplint is in. It's been all looted together. You will clean off the screws. These are the palatal screws. Clean them off to make sure there's no dried blood or anything obscuring them. Okay, it's all ready to go. Use your scanner. Scan. Now, when you scan with an OptiSplint, in the mouth or outside the mouth, you start in the middle. And you scan the full area. You'll see this is pink. Okay, we have changed to white. They both work, but white's a little bit easier to scan. So you scan this area, scan the whole uh, uh, main plate, the main area of the OptiSplint. In this case, this was um, it's a really nice scanner, the Prime Scan, so the doctor actually grabbed the screws there as well. But once you scan the main area, then you start to come out. Let me show you here. Then you come out to a scan body, and then you go back to the original area. Now, in this case, you'll see they're going to come back, and then they're going to go out to another one, like this, and then they'll go back to the center, right? Go back to the center and just keep picking them all up. Now, you'll see in, this, in the rest of this video, protocol was not perfectly followed. You see they went around to the labial and they captured a little bit of tissue, a little bit of bone area there. That's where you can get some inaccuracy with intraoral scans. We don't want any of those scans. We only want the OptiSplint. Okay, so I'm showing you a little bit here of what not to do. Okay, scan this, go out to each arm, out to each OptiSplint and come back, back and forth, back and forth until you, until you have it. Okay, and pick up the screws. All right, that is the intraoral uh, process for scanning the OptiSplint. And when you do, do it that method, then you have the option of scanning the, um, scanning the OptiSplint outside the mouth again. Okay, you can scan it twice. But when you scan the OptiSplint in the mouth, then you also want to perform this scan here with the, um, with the healing collars. All right, so let, just, just let's do a real quick recap. Photographs, day of or, or before, setup before if you wish, or as you can see here, this, this case here, this is all day of surgery records. Scan the patient before with the screws, okay? Scan the, uh, scan the patient after with the healing collars and the, scr and the screws again to match. Scan the OptiSplint outside the mouth. That is how this case is completed. If you scan the OptiSplint in the mouth, perfectly fine. Just also scan this, and then because we like the accuracy, scan the OptiSplint outside the mouth again. But what you see on this screen is what you're gonna send. These, these, uh, these files in a, in a folder on our website, you'll upload, that's it. Please call us to discuss any of this. Once we have the records, we will uh, design your case. All right, there's the screws. We have the case articulated with the screws. We have the case articulated now with the OptiSplint based on the screws. You can see them down here. That was our, that was our alignment. And then we uh, quickly uh, work with the geometries, design the prosthesis, and then we ship it to you, ready to go. Coping free, direct to multi-unit abutment, extreme precision, Boom, go to print. Now, because this is OptiSplint, you have the ability, if you wish, to make a model. And with the model, if you wanna have copings, put the copings on the multi-unit abutment analogs, seat the, the prosthesis down onto them and loot them together if you want, if you wanna have copings. If you don't wanna have copings, perfectly fine. That's how most of our cases are done. If you do wanna have copings, let us know. We're gonna design these interfaces a little bit differently here. Uh, but at this point, all you have to do is nest, print, clean, beautify, seat. Very smooth, accurate workflow. The next modality is the combi guide, where we really set the case up for success. Let's go through that whole protocol. Combi guide is, in our opinion, the, the ideal way to go through a grammetry case. With combi guide, uh, we work with you to determine uh, prosthetic thickness, implant placement, position, depth, rotation, et cetera, everything. This is part of our Chrome Guided Smile system. Uh, but in this case, it's just osteotomy, placement, and bone reduction leveling. 
Uh, and the, the metal, as you'll see, serves as the constant. We'll kind of go through that. How do you start one of these cases? This would be just like any guided surgery case you would start with rodentalab. Comb beam, teeth apart, uh, um, IOS scans, upper, lower, in occlusion, and photographs. This was a, uh, a, a, a case completed by Dr. Grant Olson, one of, our, one of our KOLs, our key KOLs for Chrome Guided Smile. And, uh, and he was uh, nice enough to share this, uh, this nice workflow with us. So thank you very much for that, uh, Dr. Olson. Uh, this uh, this uh, image here, this is a case being planned. So we, we took all the records, we designed the case, got it ready for the online meeting, we met Dr. Olson online, planned the implants, planned everything about the case. And then based on that, we fabricated uh, the pin guide, the fixation base, the osteotomy guide, and, and off he went to surgery. And repeat on the slide, these are the tools you need, okay? And then with a, with a combi guide, let's go through the process. So we already have pre-surgical files. You uploaded those to us to make the surgical guide, so you don't need to scan. We already have these at the laboratory. All right, step one, the pin guide. This patient has already been reflected above the metal. Okay, so full labial reflection, pin guide goes in, seats the fixation base. Once the fixation base is seated, you will capture a labial uh, uh, digital impression of this. And you'll capture just the teeth, the bone, and the fixation base. If you, if you find there's an issue with this, you can always put screws in the pallet, uh, the retromolar pads, wh wherever. Let, let's not worry about that. We know this works. Okay, that's your first scan. Now, once it's digitized, teeth come out, bone is leveled down to the fixation base. We, we, we carefully plan this as the bone reduction level. Okay, then and I, I put this in here just as the reminder, before with teeth, after without teeth, the constant is the fixation base. This is the tad, this is the screw. Uh, this is everything you need to preserve the bite. Next step, osteotomy goes in, implants are in, multi-units are placed, and now uh, we have even a, better, uh, even a better constant. Okay, something easy to scan, now the teeth are gone, which is the carrier guide. The carrier guide sits on the fixation base. This is a nice, tra nice transition for digitally acquiring from the opti splint or from the healing collar out to the fixation base. Okay, so you would scan this platform, not all of it, just some of it, and this won't be in a clear color. It'll be, it'll have some texture to it when it arrives, and uh, and you scan it. Very scannable. You're not scanning blood and uh, movement underneath. So kind of skipping back and forth here between live surgery and visualization here, uh, but at this point you have an option. Okay, when 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 this is in the mouth, you can put healing collars on this, put healing collars, put the carrier guide, and scan away, and then you've captured all right the position. This is not for implant placement. This is not for uh, componentry. This is only for uh, um, preserving the bite and transitioning back, okay? Now you have an option here. You can either scan the opti splint in the mouth or you can scan the healing collars. You have a choice, whichever one you wanna do, both work. And at that point, you're finished. And this is all that's uploaded to the right of the green bar because the left of the green bar, we already have this scan. This is what we used, as mentioned before, for the planning of the guide. So this is one, two, three. Scanning uh, the, 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 the file of the fixation base and the teeth, the file of the fixation base, the carrier guide, and the um, healing collars, and then a scan of the opti splint outside the mouth, either with an iOS or with a lab scanner. Totally optional, this is totally optional. I'm throwing this in there because if you have a lab scanner, you can go to whatever degree you want to go to a final zirconia at any point. Okay, now this, this image here could be on top of here. Perfectly fine, scan it in the mouth. Uh, but as we know, we wanna keep adding more and more accuracy. So these would be the three scans that you upload. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Taran Agarwal uh, completed a case uh, last week and he is, um, he, he is one of our KOLs as well for this, uh, for this process. He, if you know T-Bone, you know his experience. He is um, on, the, on the top tier A-list. He is our KOL, one of our KOLs for Chrome, for Chrome Guided Smile, for Combi Guide, uh, for lots of things. And 
He is going through this process with us with Grammetry. He's adopted Grammetry. In fact, you'll see on the last slide, um, we are having a two-day event with him and his partner in two different locations teaching this protocol. I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay, thank you very much for documenting this case, uh, T-Bone. Let's, let's just real quickly, let's cover what he did. Okay, we went through the whole process of designing the guide, all those first stages, and we'll go through all that. But in surgery, once he set the fixation base, he took out his um, prime scanner, he scanned the uh, fixation base, scanned the teeth to preserve the bite, right? To pre um, so that we have, uh, so we have the, the tooth position, we have the fixation base. And then he went through the whole process, the whole surgery, put the opti splints in, looted them together, scanned again uh, with his scanner. Look at the beautiful scans that that scanner takes. It's, it's really incredible. It's really one of the best out there. Um, and those were the two scans that he needed. That's it. Now, I, I know we're going to teach an extra oral scan uh, moving forward, um, but this is how he did it, a high degree of accuracy. And uh, this is what he sent us on the day of surgery, full face, full smile, uh, left and right images. Now, we, of course, we already had these because we worked out the whole combi guide. So everything on the left we already had. Um, and on the right is what's uploaded on the day of surgery, the STLs. All right, and based on that and his... Uh, lovely photograph. We designed the prosthesis behind the lips, within the smile, right? That's almost mandatory at, these, at, at this phase. And let's just go through the, th through the layers. So, so we have a prosthesis already designed, but here we are. That's uh, middle of surgery, picking up the fixation base and the teeth, scanning the opti splint in the mouth, bringing it together with the opposing because we have the fixation base and designing the prosthesis, okay? Very important. Now, let me just, just to clarify, in case you're, just for, for protocol, when he scans this here, this scan, this scan also includes the bite, right? We want the opposing teeth. Now, do, do we have to? We don't necessarily have to because we have this scan at the laboratory and we can follow this bite registration that we've already, already made. So it's an optional scan. You can take a, a bite registration in surgery. Not always the easiest thing to do, but that's an option. Okay, bite or no bite during surgery. The third modality that we're gonna talk about today, because there are others, of course, is uh, the tooth or teeth reference. And this is where the teeth, some of the teeth stay in the mouth to maintain the vertical reference as you complete the surgery. When you have a tooth reference case, what that means is that the patient, some of the patient's existing teeth are gonna provide the before and after bite. So this is a pretty straightforward way to complete these cases. Now this patient is not with these photos, but I just wanted to show an example of what a full smile, full face, and then an exaggerated smile should be for these. I mean, this is, a, this is an aesthetic anterior, aesthetic zone case. We wanna see an exaggerated smile so there's no surprises. Cases with Dr. Sully Sullivan, you'll see on the last slide, he is uh, he's one of our KOLs on grammatry. He has a course as well in Nashville today, uh, the, full, the full Monty on grammatry. You're gonna love it, totally worth uh, your time and, and the cost, totally worth it. So he completed this case a few weeks ago. As you can see, the teeth are circled here. They are the constant. And, and that means that I'm kind of skipping ahead here but just imagine that uh, you know, the patient started this way, right? so there's no extraction, there's no bone leveling, implants go in, uh, opti splints go in, lute them together. In this case, they were, you see, looted together here. Use some composite, composite works. No, no, no problem there, it's also white, easy to scan. Uh, we, we like Stellar, we like the, the quick light curability of it, the flowability of it, but it's optional. It was all cured in the mouth, and because there are teeth in here, it might just be um, might just be good enough to just scan this in the mouth, include the teeth, take it out, move on. If you want to put healing collars in here, then that is an additional scan, and you can scan that in the mouth, and then you would scan the opti splint outside the mouth, which is really what we're teaching as our protocol: extra oral scanning of the implants. All right, a unique protocol in the industry. And the records are very simple in this case. We're gonna have a, a, a before with the teeth. We know it's the, the, the vertical, we have the photographs. And then here you really have the option. Do you wanna scan it in the mouth or do you wanna scan it extra orally? Or scan both, scan it in the mouth. You can even scan around here carefully to pick up the tissue. 
and then you can scan it um, outside the mouth. We will not be too concerned about the lingual tissue of these cases. You can, you can even suture around this to pick it up and then upload these files. Very simple. And then, uh, and then we will design. All right, so this is not, uh, you know, this is a little, little more traditional uh, scan body type surgery, right? You, you, you've seen this done a lot with regular scan bodies, but iOS scanners do not pick it up perfectly in a bloody environment picking up between regular scan bodies. They just don't. And with this process, with the extra oral scan, uh, it will be dead on. And then the final modality for today is the denture reference. Uh, this is something that is commonly used either in an immediate situation, right, immediate denture, or in an existing case, patient has a denture, go right into surgery and use this as the record for the, the bite, the teeth, the tooth position. Really, that's a nice way to set yourself up for success with these cases, especially restoratively. A patient can either have an existing denture or you make an immediate. We can design them, you can print them. We can design them and print them and ship them to you any way you like. No problem. We can also make you beautiful finished dentures that the patient can wear if you're not going to deliver that same day or maybe even the next day. So there's options there. Okay, patient comes in, you have a denture that you're going to use as the reference. That is your, that, that is your reference for uh, the scan, um, the healing collars, the bite, the teeth, the two position, the vertical, everything. All right, let's go through a surgery. Go through the normal process. Whatever your process is, guided, unguided, freehand. Put the implants in, put the multi-unit abutments in. Then you will pick up the, um, the opti splint in the mouth. Pick it up. Do not scan this in the mouth. There's no need to. Take this out. You'll scan it on the bench. Okay. Then you put in your healing collars. You'll see these he healing collars are some eye cams. It's part of the library. It's fine. You can use them. You will scan, uh, you'll scan these, um, <laughs> you will not scan these in the mouth, you won't need to. That's a tough scan, okay? It's, it's, it's optional, but really what we want is all in one scan. And in that situation, uh, you will load both dentures with impression material, okay? And you will seat them, because this is really what we want. This gives us everything in one scan. So the upper is already in, just simply load the denture, with uh, material, seat it, and close and hold in position. Now here's the trick. This is very important. You wanna try that denture in, those dentures in, prior to loading them with impression material. These dentures cannot rest on top of those healing collars. Okay, these healing collars are kinda of tall. They're very tall. So you probably wanna use a lower profile healing collar for this process, okay? But you do not want any burn through of the healing collars. These must be entirely in wash material, otherwise the denture is tipping on one or more of the, of the healing collars and you're not getting the proper bite. So do a wash impression, right? You, now you notice there's no screws or tads. We don't need them. This is gonna be a, um, uh, an iOS impression of the healing collars outside the mouth in the denture. All right, you've captured upper lower. Next step, scan the denture 360, scan both of them. Okay, what we end up with is this. Now you, can, you should also scan the denture outside the mouth. So you're gonna scan the upper, lower. We don't need any intraoral scans of the denture. Take them out, scan one at a time, upper, lower, scan the intaglio, scan the intaglio, hold it in your hand, scan the bite. Yep, upload. Based on that, right, you're gonna upload that, sorry, you're gonna upload that along with the opti splint scans. Out, you, you see these are intraoral scans. We don't want them intraoral. We want them extraoral for the accuracy. Okay, this is what you upload. One, two, three, four, basically three, three files because these will all be in one, uh, one event and then the other event will be the, the opti splints. Upload that, we make you a prosthesis. All right, here are the records based on that. And, and those copings are just for visuals, just to show you how we have aligned the parts and then we design your prosthesis, ship it to you to print. There are no copings. That's just a nice little pretty visual. Coping free, or as we mentioned before, make some models and make copings, no problem. Totally up to you. <clears throat> on our website, for all these different things we just talked about, you're gonna upload it onto our portal. 
you'll log in, it's um, rowdentallab.com up at the top of the screen, it says uh, submit your case. And in here, you're gonna pick grammetry, see the product here, you'll have a drop down. this is how fast you want it, this is which arch your arch is, what are we doing with, wh where are the photographs, which screw are you gonna use, which healing collar, and then give us some instruction about the setup. You'll drag and drop your STL files into this folder here and upload them and off we go. We have a bookings page, which I'll, which I'll um, reference here in just a minute. And this will be a, a link so that you can pre-book your surgery. We don't want any surprises. We want to, we want to know when you're gonna be in surgery. So you'll let us know. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that there at the very end. This is where you upload your files. And then finally, the protocol to work towards the final restoration. We have um, hundreds and hundreds of these cases out, uh, out in the world, walking around, uh, and at some point they're gonna transition to a final zirconia, uh, maybe a final titanium bar with zirconia over the top, you know, different ways to make final restorations, but really today is the go-to is um, zirconia. And with these protocols, with these digital protocols, uh, we can make them coping-free, right? The Procera Bridge, uh, or if you wanna have copings, uh, for multiple reasons. They're available with this system. If you want to still uh, uh, use a, a, a more of a prosthodontic approach, face bow, articulation, mounting, excursive movements, all the things that you would go through for a final restoration, it's available with grammetry. It is not available with photogrammetry. It isn't. You would have to use some type of analog record with photogrammetry to get all this on an articulator. But with grammetry, the opti splint comes out of the mouth, it goes on analogs, it goes on a model, we make a restoration, we articulate. That's possible. And in a lot of people's opinion, that is necessary. So we have a method for both. The first protocol, this is where uh, you want high precision scanning uh, for a final restoration. And in this case, uh, I wanna thank Dr. Towell Dr. Isaac Tal, he's uh, been a long-term KOL for us as we roll out these incredible products. So thank you very much for documenting this case, Dr. T. Uh, this was a case, I'm gonna show the whole workflow in a minute, but this was the final protocol for, um, for a final restoration. This is a Chrome Natural originally, and uh, the final step. So what do you capture? You capture the prosthesis in the mouth, okay? The teeth, a little bit of the tissue, that way you capture all the, the necks. You capture the opposing, you capture the bite. All right, now while the prosthesis is out of the mouth, with some scanners, if you start to scan the labial or the buckle of this, or, or even the occlusal, and you start to roll around to the intaglio, it'll start to erase this tissue. If your system will do that, uh, if you find that that works really well, then just keep scanning um, outside the mouth after you put in these grammetry um, uh, scannable uh, analogs here. Just plug them in, they're plastic, you plug them in. This isn't for precision implant, position. This is just to maintain the bite. Scan at 360 until you see it floating on your screen. It is. It now has the opposing bite. It has, to, it has all these scans all tied together. And then while it's out of the mouth, scan the tissue in the multi-unit abutments. All right, this gives us a tissue position and, it, and that way we don't rely necessarily on the intaglio of the prosthesis for design. We rely on the sulcuses and the tissue contours. And this is what you upload. The OptiSplint is put in a box and it's sent to us Go to the top of our website, print a UPS label, ship it, we pay for it. It'll be here in a couple of days. Off we go to a final or a prototype. You can print the prototype in your office or we can make it for you, okay? Simple as that. That's the process for a final. Now, if you have a lab scanner, you can do all of this in your office and upload the files. Just follow exactly what we just talked about for the process. While this is outside the mouth, Put, uh, put, you can put this in the scanner and scan it for some precision 360, very handy. Uh, you can, and then you put the opti splint in the scanner and you scan it, okay? This is a, this is a Medit 510 or 710, either one, and it is about a, um, a 17 second scan for each side to give you a, just about a perfect STL, five microns, incredible. Upload all those files, we go to prototype or we go to final, up to you. Let's quickly go through the, what we just discussed. Okay, scan the prosthesis. Scan the prosthesis in the mouth, pick up a little bit of the tissue. All right, simple process, very easy. Scan the opposing. Kind of go through this kind of quickly because it's kind of obvious. 
Then you scan the bite, just what we talked about. Now, you take the OptiSplint, take the OptiSplint and you use the kit. The kit will have these little scan bodies inside of it. Plug one into each implant, into each, sorry, into each temp cylinder and then continue scanning. Now watch the screen on the left. As you roll around uh, to the labial lingual, you're gonna start to erase the tissue. See how it all disappears? Because these scanners are smart. Now we have the prosthesis on the screen, okay? But we also have it in, he's just doing a little touch up there. We also have it with the bite and the opposing. Now put the opti splints on the scanner, uh, uh, on the, on the, uh, in the mouth, in the patient. This video will be available on our website on the, by itself and in the program. Screw them down, add some material to the, uh, the horizontal wings, place the frame, loot the frame to the opti splints. Remember, this is in the mouth. And then you scan. Now with this, you can scan in the mouth, but really you wanna scan it outside the mouth like we've been talking about. Okay, scan it, and you notice the, the, the protocol here. You scan the honeycomb, and then you come out and scan each one of the wings alone, like that, and then you're done. You take it off. Well, it's already outside the mouth. You could scan the intaglio, you don't need to. That's an option. But at this point, you would, you would take it and you would ship it to us, um, or you would put it in your lab scanner, and you'd be done. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that this opened your eyes, opened your mind to another way, what we think is at, at today the best way to go through a digital workflow. Are we biased? Maybe a little bit, but I think we've proven that, uh, that I, in, an ideal, uh, in an ideal environment with technology that you already have, grammatry is the way to go. It's much less expensive, which is important. Let's face it, it's important. It has all the benefits of photogrammetry and an analog method. You pick whichever one you wanna do. Uh, and it starts today, there's no waiting. Uh, it meets you where you are, as we discussed, wherever you are in the evolution of digital dentistry, we'll meet you there. And we have a team, I, I, I would have a challenge to rival anyone in the country, maybe in the world, for full arch uh, design technology. Uh, we have an entire team, it's all they do. It's all they've been doing. And we plug you into that team. And we are friendly, we're supportive, we take your call. We are a full-time support group. Uh, we have a open Facebook group where we are going to be posting cases as often as possible with the current modality and then every single new modality Every time we talk about this, it improves, and we're gonna share all that with you so that you can learn it uh, in the Facebook group so that you can apply it tomorrow. You don't have to go and take a course in order to learn this. Not, not, not really, especially if you're already into this technology. You don't really need a course to do it. So, uh, but if you want to go to a course, and we highly encourage it, if you're entering this arena or if you're changing modalities, or you've been doing this and you're curious about that, uh, we have uh, a couple of excellent programs coming up. We partnered with 3D Dentist, uh, with Dr. Taryn Agarwal and Dr. Sully um, uh, uh, Sullivan, have two programs coming up. We hope you will sign up for them. In fact, if you use the code 3DGRAM, you can have a nice discount on signing up. One is March 9th to 10th in Raleigh, that is at uh, T-Bone's uh, huge, beautiful institute. Live, this will be live patient surgery and the whole workflow, start to finish. How do you plug grammatry into your practice? Go take this course. And the other course is with Dr. Sullivan, same thing, plugging you into photogrammetry, start to finish, live patient printing, designing, seating, the whole thing. So if you click on this QR code, You'll see our resources online. I think you'll be impressed. This is for ordering, for booking, for scheduling, for learning. Everything you want to know about grammatry is on that link. So thank you again. I hope we opened your mind up to what we think is the best. Have a great day.